Auditorium of this General Assembly, a place that has always embraced our ambitions and agonies, we call upon all of you to join hands and work together to create a better world for our sons and daughters and for future generations. A better world in which they can enjoy a decent, prosperous and stable life. A world in which all political, diplomatic and economic capabilities and the latest technological and scientific advancements are harnessed to preserve life in all its forms. In the United Arab Emirates, we have focused on this vision. We have unleashed the wheel of progress in every field from development, economy and education to technology and industry. Since its inception, the UAE has adopted a transparent foreign policy based on credibility and building balanced relations with all countries. This includes supporting regional and international efforts aimed at achieving stability and reducing escalations, encouraging dialogue and building bridges, as well as resolving crises instead of merely managing them. As our world stands at a dangerous crossroads, we must redirect the compass of our international action to focus on a set of fundamental and non-negotiable principles. Most importantly, we must stand united in the face of contentious issues, support all peoples without applying double standards, ensure the protection of civilians, uphold the rule of law, as well as commit to human rights and respect the principles of good neighborliness. Returning to these basic principles has become more urgent than ever, particularly with the serious violations committed in conflicts raging in our region and around the world. These violations have deepened human suffering, erased decades of progress, and caused widespread displacement, creating massive refugee crises. This has also increased the burdens on concerned and neighboring countries, particularly with the ongoing bloody wars on the Gaza Strip, the wars in Sudan and Ukraine, and the crises taking place in Yemen, Syria, Libya, Sahel, Afghanistan, Myanmar, Haiti, and other countries. It must be recalled that even wars have rules. Parties must respect international law, including international humanitarian law. In Gaza, an immediate and lasting ceasefire must be reached. Rapid, full and unimpeded access of humanitarian assistance at large scale must be allowed and the hostages and detainees must be released. The relevant Security Council resolutions must also be implemented. We must act wisely in response to the rapid developments threatening our region. It is evident that what we have warned about is now unfolding beyond our control. We regret to see the war spread to Lebanon at a time when we were hoping for an announcement about reaching a deal to end the war on Gaza. It is unacceptable to ignore the decisions and advisory opinions issued by the highest judicial body of the United Nations, namely the International Court of Justice. This includes the provisional measures issued by the court regarding the war on Gaza. 
In this context, we call for maintaining the security and safety of people. We must safeguard regional and international stability, including the security of international navigation, trade routes, and energy supplies. This is especially crucial in light of continued attempts by terrorist and extremist groups to exploit people's suffering for their own political goals. In the Sudan, the warring parties must stop the fighting immediately and permanently and allow unhindered and sustainable access to humanitarian assistance across borders and conflict lines. We completely reject the continued targeting by the warring parties of civilians and their obstruction of the delivery of humanitarian assistance. We strongly condemn the blatant attack launched by the Sudanese armed forces on the residence of the ambassador of the United Arab Emirates in Khartoum on the 29th of September 2024 in flagrant violation of the fundamental principle of the inviolability of diplomatic premises and of international conventions and norms, particularly the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. We call on the warring parties to engage seriously in peace talks. In this regard, we emphasize the importance of building on the positive outcomes achieved in the meetings of the working group of the Aligned for Advancing Life-Saving and Peace in Sudan Group, ALPS. We commend all initiatives aimed at finding a comprehensive solution to the crisis. We must all continue working with regional and international partners to alleviate the suffering of the Sudanese people to ensure a safer and more prosperous life for them. In Ukraine, the impacts of the ongoing war have transcended seas and continents. Therefore, it is imperative to find a peaceful solution to end this conflict, which has increased global polarization, created refugee and prisoners crises, and affected global food security. Through our continued engagement with all parties, my country contributed to the release of around 2,000 prisoners of war through mediation efforts between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. We continue to push for dialogue and de-escalation, and we support recovery and reconstruction. As we speak of resolving protracted crises, we must reiterate our full support of Morocco's sovereignty over the Moroccan Sahara region, as well as for the autonomy initiative to maintain the territorial integrity of the Kingdom of Morocco. Mr. President, in numerous crises, my country refused to allow the international response to be obstructed by growing global polarization or obstacles imposed by warring parties. To this end, my country has sought to overcome these challenges and has utilized all available means to enable humanitarian work to continue. To help all those in need around the world, in line with our commitment to the legacy of Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, the founder of the UAE. Today, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the UAE, may God protect him, directed 100 million US dollars in urgent relief aid to the brotherly people of Lebanon to support them in facing the current challenges. When the war intensified in the Sudan, 
pushing millions of people towards a multidimensional humanitarian disaster, the UAE devoted its efforts to supporting the Sudanese people. We recently contributed 100 million US dollars to support UN efforts to address the humanitarian repercussions of this war in the Sudan and neighboring countries. In addition, we established two field hospitals in Chad to provide medical services to all those in need, including Sudanese refugees.